Nothing happens on its own. You have to make it happen. I worked with them for seven years at seven rupees per hour. He was the only Indian name which came on Discovery Channel, production manager Anil Srivats. Love your children. Please don't think that your children are your trophies. Hi, Elrugu Namaskara. Welcome to today's podcast. And today we have a very, very, very special person. Someone who I personally admire a lot. I look up to her and I've known her for the last seven years and something that's very special about her is she's aging younger and every time I look at her I feel okay there's something to learn and there's something to admire about her Without any delay, let me welcome our today's guest, Chaya Srivatsa, founder of Guild of Women Achievers and an author and an independent journalist for over three decades. And she has master degrees in English literature and also a bachelor degree in law. And there's so much to speak about her. So, yes, ma'am, welcome to the show, Real Celebrity. Thank you. Thank you, Spoo. I love to hear nice things about me. And... <laughs> During this interview, I'm sure you're going to say some more nice things about me. You know, as you grow older, it feels good to hear nice things about you. Let me go back to 1947. Two big events happened at that time. You're expecting it. You know, I was a four-month-old baby when I was shunted off to Mysore. And I lived there, did my schooling, my college. Till I got married, I was there. Amazing. So we have a common roots and I come from Mysore. My native is Mysore and it's one of the most beautiful places. And I'm damn sure you agree with it, right? I agree with you that the best people come from Mysore. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So, uh, ma'am. Uh, before everybody looking at this uh, video gets that curiosity, yeah. I want to break this down for them. Uh, in the last seven years, I have never seen Chaya Ma'am wearing any other color apart from orange. And this is something which actually is very different with her and I would like to know the reason. Though I already know, I want you guys to know the reason. Yes ma'am, why are you always in orange? Oh my god, that's such a personal question. <laughs> And since you've asked me on this show, I think I need to say it because a lot of people ask me this question. 17 years ago, that is in 2005, I lost my husband. He was a naval officer. We had a beautiful married life and after he passed away, I wanted to brand myself not as a widow, but somebody who wanted to continue what he roused in me, my potential. You know, he helped me maximize my potential. So he was in a way more than a husband, he was like my guru. So I wanted to pay a tribute to my guru and decided on a dress code. And I chose orange. Okay. And someone told me, you know, you look good in orange. And who doesn't like to be told you look good in something? <laughs> so you were uh, sent to Mysore from Sikandrabad. Yeah. And what happened after that? Quickly, if you can just okay. tell us a little bit about uh, the journey and where it all started and how did it go forward? Okay, when I was sent to Mysore, my grandmother brought me up, I told you. Now, this is what is what Warren Buffett calls the ovarian lottery. 
My aunt, that's my father's sister, was a private companion to Jai Chamra Jendravadiyar and his four sisters, Jaya, Vijaya, Sujaya and Shijaya. They all studied in the palace because my great-grandfather, Rao Bahadur M.C. Rangaingar, was with Krishna Rajendravadiyar. Okay, he was a, he used to teach him English. When Jai Cham Rajendravadiyar's daughter, Gayatri Devi, became five years old, he called my aunt and said, do you have a daughter? I want her as a private companion for my daughter. My aunt said, I only have a son, but my brother has a daughter. And that daughter happened to be me. Wow. So there I entered at the age of six into the Mysore Palace as a private companion to Princess Gayatri Devi, whose grandson is now Yaduvir, who is mm. the current yes, yes, Sion, yes, yes. Of yes. the Maharaja of Mysore. Yes. So my schooling was brilliant. In the palace, we were only five of us. Mm. The princess, her cousin, our teacher's daughter, Veena. She's only one now who I am in touch with. She lives in Kurk. She and I are very good friends and myself. Veena was picked up as one of the most brilliant girls in Good Shepherd Convent. Mm. Okay. The same Good Shepherd Convent which is in Mysore now? Wow. My mom happened to study there. Really? Yes. Good, good school. Yes. So, all five of us studied together in the Mysore Palace. We had ten teachers teaching the five of us. Wow. Yes. Wow. Okay. And we all were in totally love with the Hindi teacher. Hmm. He looked like Yul Brynner. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> nice, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, okay. totally bald and with a black bindi on his uh, forehead. And we just sat, and we were about seven or eight years old, and we would be sitting and looking at him. Didn't learn much Hindi, but we just looked at him and looked at him. <laughs> because we had no, absolutely no interaction with people outside the palace. You know, the car would come and pick me up from home, take me to the palace, bring me back in the evening, and that's it. Okay. And Veena would stay just across the road, so Veena would come home and we would play. We played in the school, we played at home. We had no other friends. So it was in a very, uh, what shall I say, um, protected environment that my school Right. happened. This is very interesting. I didn't know about this. So, which year was this? 56, 57. And how long did you do this kind of schooling? No, my father was in the army, short service commission in the in Hyderabad. So, he moved to Mysore because his parents were getting gold and he wanted to come and be with them. And he saw me and he said, this girl is getting too big for her shoes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because I went to school in a Rolls Royce, <laughs> horse driven carriage. I thought it's a normal thing for me. It was, isn't it? I mean, I just. I like the way you said it. Yeah. It's, it's a normal thing for it me. It was normal to sit in a Rolls Royce and go to school and come back and, and go to the palace. And, you know, we used to run around in the Darbar Hall. We used to play there. So for me, that was school. I remember my cousin who was studying in uh, IIT Pubai, later, he would keep saying there and the palace was lit up. So I said, eh, that numb school a dog. <laughs> After that, he never spoke about IIT to me. <laughs> Amazing. That's yeah, really till that time, I didn't realize what a school I studied in, you know. Hmm. And my father decided to pull me out of the palace school. Hmm. Okay. Okay, and he put me to Christ the King Convent in Mysore. Okay. For my ninth and tenth. It's the best thing my father did for me. Okay. Because from a class of five, I came to a class of 50 girls. Interesting. Yes, I made a lot of friends. So then I went to Maharani's College. I wanted to go to Maharaja's College because I wanted to study journalism, philosophy and English literature. You knew what you wanted to study? Yes, I knew r what Lola wants, Lola gets. Okay, what Lola wants, Lola gets. So Chaya Ma'am knew what she really wanted to do, what she really wanted to study, how she wanted to be and who she wanted to be. So let me come to that. You knew it, yeah. but how? How did you know about it? You know, there is something within you which tells you there's... That's why I believe in spirituality, which tells me, Vedic scriptures tell you there is within you, God is within you. So this God within me told me, Chaya, you are made for this. 
But it doesn't happen with everybody, right? Maybe some of them watching this video would might might be thinking, "Ki why is that?" This doesn't happen with me. Why is that? I don't know what I it's want. It's happening, to do. but you don't recognize it. What we call in spiritual language, agnyanam. So how do you I have this kind of agnyanam in us that we don't recognize our own potential? I somehow discovered. You know, you won't believe it, Spoo. I want to tell you this. This is a message I want to send out. When I was eight years old, though I studied in a school with five students, my grandmother. had a math teacher for me and my grandfather happened to be one of the founders of the national institute of engineering nie in mysore so he got one of the students to come and teach me math i hated math okay but anyway this math teacher one day touched my hand i looked at it and i said okay next day he touched it here i said okay third day he touched me here So I went to told my grandmother. I said, "Party, you know, he touched me here, he touched me there, he touched me there. Why he touched me, party?" She took him to the laundry the next day. <laughs> okay. Tell. You've got to tell. And my grandmother heard what I told her. This is what girls must know to tell when they know a bad. I didn't. Nobody told us about good touch, bad touch, and all that those days. But I knew it was not something nice. He's a math teacher. Why is he touching my hand? Okay. So I had the gumption to go and tell my grandmother about it. And after that, she only had one old Mr. Venkata Swami to come and teach me math. <laughs> <laughs> nice. He I never mean, recognizing the moment we recognize it. And so you see it. age of 8 i knew what was not good for me right okay so coming back to college i wanted to study philosophy i wanted i had no clue what philosophy was mm. but it sounded good yeah <laughs> yeah english literature yes i was already a english literature student in school and journalism i wanted to write only maharaja's college offered that but i got a seat and i was very happy Then I came and told Appa, I got seat in Maharaja's College. Why you want to go to Maharaja's College? Go at College. Go to Maharani's College. Girls College. Appa, they don't have all. The, whatever they have, you do. That's it. It was whatever they have, do. So I went to Maharani's College to take something called Hell, History, Economics, and something else. Hepa, whatever it was. I said, Oh God, three years I'm going to die studying all this. I went to the principal. I said, "Ma'am, please, at least let us have English literature, my dear. You need to have seven people to start it. Yeah, if I get seven people, you will start it. Yes. So I went around. Hey, English literature, the quality, right? Yeah, English, I brought all English literature. I went and begged. Of course, Gayatri was there, Veena was there, Ramba was there, huh. and me. Okay. I did get three more people. I went around, did lot of lobbying. I got three more people. I said, "Ma'am." We've got seven people, and we were the first batch to start English literature in Maharani's College. Wow! Wow! In 19 so Maharani's College students watching this, you got to remember yes. who started these subjects in your college. And Amba became one of the professors in English later on. You know, one of our five girls. Very there. interesting. So what I'm saying is, I told you what Lola wants. I wanted English literature. I got it. You've got to go after what you want. Nothing happens on its own. you have to make it happen yes so what after that then i got married okay that's a very interesting journey you must watch this and i think uh, talking to chaya ma'am about a uh, uh, relationship i've personally had a lot of conversation with her regarding this and she's trained a lot of students of mine and it will make a lot of difference for you as well so make sure that you're going to but how did i get married yes i went to apply for a job in a bank okay I got a husband. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got the job too by the way, but the lady who gave the test in the bank, she kept on asking me whose daughter are you and blah blah blah. I said why is she interested in me? If he's a man I can understand. Why is this lady interested in me? Okay? So anyway I just ignored her. I failed in the test because I was bad at math. She called me back and she said we are going to give you a retest because you've done very well in the other papers. I said who oh, please spare me. I didn't want a bank job. 
I had a very nice offer from Saraswati Vidya Mandira in Vishweshpuram as a class teacher for the 8th standard. I wanted that. But you know, in the you know, uncles and aunts and all of them, no, 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 bank job is good for ladies, you'll get a lot of money and all that. But I was never after money. You know, daddy, mommy didn't say anything. They said, oh, no, it's your choice. You're going to work, fine, okay. That lady who asked me those questions, she called me up the next day. Can you come home with your parents? Please, my brother has come down on leave and he would like to meet you. But later, my bro that brother told me never, I never asked her what to meet you. Okay. <laughs> so I told daddy, daddy, this lady is asking me, will you take? He said, okay, let's go. And we went. And he saw. I conquered. That's, that's a sudden twist? Yes, that's why I said. Okay. He saw, he saw, he conquered. He didn't conquer, I conquered. I him. can see you <laughs> blushing even now. Yes. So how's that moment, the moment you saw your you husband? You know, I didn't see him. You know what, he was sitting the way you're sitting. Okay. He was wearing a Kolapuri chapel with a red blob on it. Oh my God. Okay. I was just looking at his feet, neatly manicured. Uh, toenails, very nice, you know, feet. And I said, if a man can look after his feet so well, he look after his wife also well. Okay. <laughs> so men who are watching this video, you please get this. Right? Yes, I see. You know, when I look at a man wearing a chapel or something like that, and I'm thinking, uh, all the men watching this video will yes, be looking at it. It's person. so important, you know, to have even my sons. I have two sons. They are also very particular. In fact, my younger son tells me, Mom, I think you need to go for a pedicure. It's come down from the father. Sure. So you see, that's what attracted me. I asked him later, what attracted you to me? He said, your voice. I'm sure. So you see, it's not looks. It's not my long hair. I had long hair. It's not those things. It's not that he's handsome. No, his feet. For me, for him, my voice. These are things which will last forever. Looks and all go away after some time. That brings me to a question. How was your relationship with Sir? Terrible. <laughs> okay. Believe me, it was terrible because number one, he was 12 years older to me. Okay. And my husband was one of those silent types, you know. Naval officer, yeah. nice in his uniform, he looked very handsome and all that, but never would talk much. And if he was upset about something, he would go into pregnant silence for two, three days. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah, I didn't even know why he was so quiet. So one day I said, oh, I'll write a little poem. I wrote a little poem, put it in his lunchbox. Okay? And I rang up his friend. I said, you know, when he opens his lunchbox, tell me what he, tell me what his expression was. In the evening when he came, he kept his lunch box on the table. I went and took it open, that letter wasn't there. Okay. I still have that letter with me. Wow. Handwritten. So beautiful. Yeah, I even put it on Facebook once. Nice. Yeah. So what had you written? Oh, that's, you are my lord and master and blah blah kind of thing. Okay, if you can tell me quickly about what happened later before you actually did the big things that you have done. You know what? It's not the big things. It's the little things that you do which become big. Right. I was quite happy being a mom. I got a job in Casey College as a lecturer. I taught there for 10 years till my asthma took over and my doctor told me that you shouldn't be talking so much. So I joined corporate. I joined a company, a private public limited company as a publicity manager. Mm -hmm. And one day when I was sitting there, I saw this business India, there was an ad which said wanted somebody who's below 30 MBA with six years experience to start the advertising department of Eureka Forbes. I applied for it. My colleague, she said, hey, you've not done MBA. You don't have six years in this thing. I said, let them reject me. Why should I reject myself? Okay. So I applied. And surprise, surprise, I was called for the interview. Mm. And I was the only one in the room there. And the director, one Sardar, you know, Mr. Aluvalia, so he was walking up and down. I'm wondering, why is he walking up and down? Then he says, okay, Chaya, tell me, give me one reason why we should employ you. You don't have any of the qualification. I said, because I'll never take maternity leave because I've got teenage children. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He just looked at me, he said, you're hired. 
So I set up the advertising department for Eureka Forbes. And then I joined Taj Group of Hotels. That was an amazing experience, working with Taj Hotels. And there, a big thing happened in my life. This was a really big thing that happened. I happened to meet, or rather, come in contact with Anita Raj. Anita Raj was the MC for the Festival of India on Doordarshan. I, I'm sure you were not even born at that time. <laughs> of course not, yeah. <laughs> so, it was an amazing program which happened in New York and Anita was based in New York and she was do the MC. And because I was an MC for a lot of programs in Bombay, I watched it with great interest and I fell in love with her style. Okay, a very free-flowing kind of a style that she had. So when I was working in Taj, I happened to hear her from behind talking to somebody. Yeah, I am Anita Raj, I am staying in Hotel Sea Rock. I went home and called up Sea Rock, asked for her num room number and said, I am a journalist and I'd like to write about you. So she said, I am leaving back to New York tomorrow. If you can come before nine o'clock, I can meet you. Now, I'm in Kolaba, she's in Bandra, mm. North and South Bangalore, I mean Bombay, mm. rainy season. My husband said, are you crazy? I said, yes, I am. Mm. I managed to reach there at 8.45 or something. She opened the door, she said, hey, you're a very punctual journalist. She gave me the interview. It came out in Sunday Observer, full page. Mm. Three months later, she called me. Hey, I come here, I'm in touch, can you come and meet me? So I said sure and I went and met her. And normally I write about a lot of people, I just forget about it later, right? And when she called me, I said okay, went there. She gave me a beautiful nali silk sari. Mm -hmm. I said okay, thank you and all that. Then she said, Chaya, I'm making a video. She used to run a television program in New York. Okay. I've done a lot of footage on South India. I'm going to do a film on South India video. Mm -hmm. I want you to write the script for it. I want you to come to New York and stay with us for six months and do this. Wow. We'll provide you the, you know, to stay and food, and whatever. I said, oh my God, for me the American dream was there, but not like this, falling into my lap. Right. I told her, I can't come for six months, I won't leave my husband for six months and come, but three months I can manage. He used to go sailing for three months, so I can leave him for three months. <laughs> okay. So, that was my first trip to the Big Apple. Right. Yeah. I think you never know. Uh, if I didn't go that day, exactly. Spurti, if my husband told me, it's raining, you'll get wet. I said, so what if I get wet? I'm going to meet Anita Raj. Right. Everything is a learning experience, Spurti. Everything is. True. I was interviewing this lady uh, who was the sheriff of Bombay hmm. for All India Radio. Bombay. Okay. After it was over, she called me outside and she said, will you do a small thing for us? We have a NGO called Vaitalik, where we do uh, classical dance programs for foreigners in the Taj Hotel at the Tanjore restaurant, exclusively for them at 6.30 in the evening. Can you come and compare those things, MC those things? But we'll only be paying you 7 rupees per hour. It's only for a one hour. I said, sure. You won't believe, I worked with them for seven years at seven rupees per hour. Seven rupees per hour, okay. But it was an amazing experience because some king of Netherlands or somebody came with his group. You know, I had to tell them about the version and because I was a dancer, I knew about how to present it and things like that. Because of that, I got opportunities to come on to SS Elizabeth and SS Rotterdam, which were uh, ships, luxury ships which came and birthed in Bombay. Nobody was allowed on it, but the Maharashtra's tourism department invited me to do the emceeing for them for, of the Indian classical dances. Amazing. For 7 rupees 50, look where it got me. Now today youngsters say, what's the package, what's the package? Don't ask for the package. The beginning is always underestimated. Yes, you'll never know, you know, where it will take you. Don't look for what is coming out of it. Look for what you're going to give it. When I hear all of that you're saying, I feel, is there any stone that you have not touched? Is there any stone untouched by you? 
you are a dancer cycling. you are a jump. cycling yeah cycling yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i really regret not having learned how to cycle because i was so scared of falling you are an author too and how many books have you authored so oh far? most of my books are autobiographical okay except for one which is called inspirational thoughts mm. this is see every year uh, every year or every other year i go to the spiritual retreat in the us it's called the arsha vidya gurukulam i go there and there is a swami ji who's amazing teaching mm. so every class of his i attended i would write down one or two things that he talked about mm. and i would write that evening go back to my room and write something about that thought so i got about 370 thoughts okay so i brought out a book mm. sitting in america writing to this printer in my saw i got that thing printed soft copy in up and down and everything and swami ji released that book in the us it's called chayaisms inspirational thoughts yeah chayaisms inspirational thought that is not autobiographical mm. the rest of it they're all you know corporate dropadi what happened to me in my professional life and things like that but another thing i've done is see all those articles that i wrote about good celebrities i met i kept the cuttings mm. i took a s- scan of these cuttings good ones and made a coffee table book right and that coffee table book is amazing <laughs> it is one of its kind yes, oxford bookstore told me that i am the only journalist in the world to do something like that so you've been doing a lot of things and so many things that has inspired us and a lot many more people and you've also been a life coach at one of the most prominent companies and uh, for yeah. a long long time that uh, thing brings me to a lot of questions that i have in mind which could help a lot of people watching this video so if i may ask you certain things okay which could be a quite difficult questions but uh, you but know can i tell you how i got into a yeah, company as a life absolutely. coach absolutely yes mr mohandas pai mm-hmm. was the uh, to an ashram in Mysore which was just behind Infosys I just sent him a message saying hi I'm your neighbor that's all mm. now Mr Mohandas Pai is very prompt with his emails mm. the next two minutes I get an email saying come and meet me at 1:30 mm. he's a man who travels a lot but he happened to be in Mysore that day see this is all where providence works right okay so i said okay and i went to meet him and no security everything cleared blah 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 mr mohandas pai has asked me he looked at me in my orange dress and my gray hair and he had seen me in in a more glamorous role he said what have you done to yourself you're a corporate woman you should be back in corporate i said as what come here we need you we have thousands of trainees here who are under great stress we need a woman like you strong woman like you to be an all time mother atm for them hmm all time mother atm he so called been me. an all time mother for how many people so far for 10 years for 10 years i was with them so maybe around 20 25000 of them oh my god because i used to teach them meditation i used to teach them pranayama i taught them uh, what i call personal enhancement programs the most beautiful time i had in corporate life was with infosys with infosys my so right and a lot of people today there's no actual skill set that they have gotten you know in their schools and college no financial education no skills that is actually required to act, you know kind of scale up to the the day, the dreams are so big today that is because educational institutions have now become recruiting agencies they want people to come colleges want students to come to them they'll do anything to get them they'll give them marks they'll give them attendance that's not the way to do it right because there are so many of them cropping up all over the place and the pie is that much big and everyone wants a piece of that pie so how do you get it but isn't it indian parents are telling students or the kids this is how it is and who why should parents interfere shouldn't they let their children decide what no, they want that, to do it's not happening in india they should do it how how is that you think that change can bring in because anybody today if they go and tell their parents that i want to become a artist i want to become a sports person not i want to become a you know uh, something which is not a 
common thing like a doctor, engineer or anything that is very orthodox, they're not allowed to. Even today, India, why will you do this? Who are Even they to, to allow? Who are they to allow? We are all born with fundamental rights. So is a two-year-old born with a fundamental right. I don't like this milk. I don't want it. You can't push the bottle into his mouth. But that's not the scene. That's not the case. So let it be now. Change. If parents want their children to learn and not study, don't be Marxists. M-A-R-K Marx. That Marxist. Not M-A-R-X Marx. Okay? If you want them to be not oriented towards Marx, but towards learning, towards understanding, towards building a skill, encourage them to do what they're doing. Right. My younger son Anil is not the math science types. He would sit and watch movies on TV, not movies, TV shows. At that time it had just come, okay? My husband being an engineer and conservative, he would tell me, look at your son, all the time watching TV. Wait, wait. Hmm. There is something happening there. Good thing he's not drugging and alcoholing and womanizing, whatever. Wait, let's see. And look what happened. He worked with MedStar, which was doing for Discovery Channel, medical detectives. Because he had done criminology in BA, he was recruited for that. And he was the only Indian name which came on Discovery Channel, production manager Anil Srivatsa. Wow. So I told my husband, see, he was watching TV. He got into the TV business. Interesting. Trust your child. Okay, he's failed in it. Let him fail in it. Let him succeed in something else that he's good at. Love your children. Please don't think that your children are your trophies. And isn't this becoming a reason for a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression, a lot of... A lot of Bad parenting, sorry. Yes. It, children are not bad. It's bad parenting. So it's what's, come down. what's bad parenting? Bad parenting is not looking at your child as you are a trustee of your child. You're not the owner of your child. Just because you have given birth to your child, you cannot take charge of his whole life. Whom you should marry, what you should... You know, they even go to the extent of sitting next to them in the CET council. And they tell them, Oh, our job beda, pack it chana gila. What do they know? Let him take it. Let him find out for himself that he doesn't like it. Is it a lot of restrictions at the childhood and the, you know, kind of, uh, you know, you gotta listen to me. This is something. You know what? Not listen to me. What will people say? Mm. You got to listen to what people say. So how do you come out of it? Come out of it? Why should you listen to what people... Who are the people? People in Guatemala? People in Timbuktu? Who are the people? They are also thinking, who will people say? So what do you have... What is the message that you have to people, those who say, Log kya kahenge? Bolne do! Kuch to log kahenge Logon ka kaam hai kehna Right. Super. Yeah, that's a beautiful song. Okay. I'm sorry I sang it badly, but <laughs> this song is lovely. <laughs> so ma'am, some quick questions regarding life and I think who better than you could, you know, give me these insights. So what keeps you the way you are when it comes to your physical health and mental health? Okay, physical health I'll tell you. Right from school I was an NCC. Hmm. College also NCC, Camp Gogodo, all that, okay? Get up at 6 o'clock and go for left, right, left, right, about turn, Age Bado, Dahine Chor, Dhan, Rabbish. At that time it was like great because we used to get one masal dose after that. Mohat Mohat Paisa gave masal dose, free. Okay. Adu Kosro Hukti Dvinao. But that made us fit. Right. Okay. After I got married, my husband, being a naval officer, nice and trim and smart, I want to be like him next to him. So I used to go for a jog in the morning. I think when I look back to it, probably uh, a lot many of you at your age wouldn't have heard of this word called anxiety, stress, depression at the age of 30 or 35. I think it was... Now it's become like every alternative person you can hear this word. I'm going through stress, 
I'm going through anxiety, I'm going through depression and something is not right about my life. So why do you think this shift has happened? That's I think because too much of aspirations, too much of expectations, too much of competition, too much of uh, I want to be better than her or him or whatever. That's why. We never had those things. So when it comes to relationship, I have certain things to ask you. We see good relationships and we see bad relationships. Relationship plays a very, very, very important role in anything that we do. Why is that happiness missing in relationship these days? Ego. What's ego? I'm better than you. But is it, is it with everybody? With everybody, yeah. Everybody. Even in spiritual life, I have found that out. One guru says, I'm better than that guru. Right. So we spoke about a lot of things. Now I have this very uh, interesting question. There's so many women out there aspiring to do something big, achieve something. And uh, they kind of, you know, uh, want to do, want to prove their identity or maybe I would say want to create their identity. I think you would be a great person to tell them how to begin, where to begin. Begin what? To start their journey. Let's start at the very beginning. A very good way to start. Just start. Just start. What's your message to these girls? Don't let anybody stop you. Start it. Don't let your own failure stop you. Restart. Okay, I have an interesting Restart. question. Was there any time that you felt like, okay, this was it? And this is the moment you felt like at the bot the most bottom space? Like you went there mm. and you felt cute. I'll never get up from there. Yeah. yeah. Was there any situation like that? Because I've heard this. I mean, personally, probably I have experienced this. Kind of you get into a phase okay. where, okay, this is where I can't probably get up. One moment. One moment I felt it. When the day after I was dismissed from HMT, hmm. the front page of Indian Express, three column, top executive sacked for fraud, indiscipline and misconduct was the line. And Chaya Srivatsa did this, did this, did this. It came in the newspaper. Okay. I just looked at it and that was the first time since that whole thing I went through, I fell into my husband's lap and I sobbed. I sobbed from the top, the tip of my toe till my head. I sobbed. Why did I sob? Not because I was dismissed. I said I addressed so many students in colleges. I address so many of them in schools. My nieces and you know all of them look up to me. My father looks up to me. Have I let them down with this? That is what made me cry. That I felt bad about. I called up my father. I said, Appa, I'm so sorry. You're so well known. He said, Parma, you look after yours. Don't worry about my name. Mm -hmm. You do what you have to do to clear your name. Don't worry about me. And you sobbed and that was a moment you felt, okay, it's, it's over. But what was the next moment that you felt, no, I'm going to prove myself. I'm going to come out of all this. I've not done this and I'm going to stand up for Surprisingly, myself. Surprisingly, it was my daughter-in-law. At that time, she, they were with me because the baby was still small. So I brought them from Chennai to my place. We were invited for a wedding that day, cousin's wedding. I had decided not to go. So I was rolling out rotis and my tears were falling into the roti mm. thing, okay? She came, Chetna came inside and she said, Mom, aren't you getting ready to go for the wedding? I said, Chetna, they'll all be thinking, here comes the fraud and all that. He said, Mom, you have built so many years, you have built your image. You think that one word in that thing will spoil your image? Mom, go, get ready, wear that red sari with that black border, no? You look beautiful in that. Wear it, put red lipstick and go for the wedding, Mom. She kind of lifted me up that day. I went for the wedding. Everybody was eager to talk to me. You know why? Because I said, she's got the courage to come. <laughs> <laughs> right. They all thought I'll be cringing at home and crying and all that. She dresses up like this, like one film star and comes. They all want to oh, I said, okay. So sometimes when you go down, also people want you. When you come up also people want you because they feel that, you know, I have 
made friends with her and I want her to remember that I made friends with her when she was down. She'll come up again, I know. Amazing. This is the point I think every top achiever would have felt. I think everyone I will feel. Amita Bachchan ko dekho. And I'm sure about it because I've met so I met so many women achievers in the last. Why seven women? Years. Even men feel yes, that. Yes, exactly. Way, Baba. That point where you feel okay, it's over. I'm yeah. Not gonna, but if a person wakes up from that point, that where he feel that it's done, it's over, and my life is gone for nuts, and if he wakes up from that point, I think it becomes unstoppable. Yeah, that's what I said. Once you get up and sh get up, dress up, show up. Yeah, and if that can't stop, I think nothing, nothing can, can stop. stop. Nothing Amazing. can stop. Nothing can stop you. Amazing. What's your message to all the men watching this? All the men watching this is only one thing. You know, between you've heard of the Ardhanarishwara concept, okay? Now, the moon landing on the moon has been called Shiv Shakti. What does it mean? It took lady scientists and male scientists to make that wretched thing go and sit up on top there. Okay? Shiva and Shakti came together. So a man and a woman are Shiva and Shakti. You come together, you can achieve miracles like they did now. Other countries haven't done it. We've done it. In a country where you have rape and molestation and dowry death and domestic violence, everything is happening here. But that is also happening. Isn't it? Yeah. So, which means if we can do that, we can stop this also. That's a great message indeed. And what's your message to all those beautiful women watching this interview? Beautiful women are not your beauty in your looks, okay? Beauty is from within. I want to wind up by saying, as a journalist, I have become a very good friend of Raj Kapoorji because I was interviewing him a lot and all that. He used to call me to his cottage quite often and quite often because it was very far away, my boys used to come with me, one of them. So that day we were sitting down, it was a small little cottage he had. He would sit down with his desk, spittoon because he used to have a lot of smokers cough and Vajanti Mala, Padmini and Nargis photographs on the wall. Mm. He would be sitting and I would be sitting down there. So I say Bato Bato me, he said, you know Chaya, you're a very beautiful woman. I said, Raji, with this, this and this, you're calling me beautiful. So, dil ki bohat sundar ho. And he told my son, Beta, you make sure that your mother is always like that. What a great lesson that was for my son. He was 14 at that time. Right. You should keep your mother like this. True. He didn't tell me, look I after yourself and all that. Right. He told my son. Take care of your mother, that she is always beautiful. This is why I keep saying, you know, at the back of the mind, I always know that there is this man who's going to be there for me no matter what. Yes. He's going to lift me up. And probably he's never come in to any picture of my professional life until today. But I know if I failed someday, there is this man to hold me up. I really I like that picture, by the way. Today I saw it and I said, see, this is how Spurti and Vishwa should be. Yeah, and he gives me a lot of courage, courage to do what I am. I mean, without his presence. See, we may go here and there sometimes because we are human. Kavi kavi ho jata hai. But you come back to square one. Right. You come back to square one, and that square one is husband, wife. Right. That relationship daddy, mummy, husband, wife, brother, sister. And what? Beautiful. Amazing. I think this will always remain to be a very, very special interview. With that, I think uh, I, sh I cannot end this episode without talking about our partners. I know Chaya Ma'am from 7 years and I know Sri Krishna Chetty group of jewelers from 7 years. And uh, this interview and series of these interviews cannot happen without their support. And uh, you know, even the birth of KWA or Indian Women Achievers Awards, which is launched this year, cannot be the way it is without the support of CKC groups. Yeah. Uh, I must thank Vinod sir and I must thank the entire team for being so amazingly supportive. And I must say that Chaya Ma'am and I love wearing Sri Krishna Shetty group of jealousy. Yeah, but you know something, I can't afford to be in Sri Krishna Shetty <laughs> other than your guest on the show or jury of KWA. I just love this. Lovely, love isn't it? it? So yeah. how, how do you like what you're wearing this? today? Wow, you must see this. 
right? Yes. And how about your neck piece? You've bought so many jewelry of. So many of how them. How do you like them? In jewelry? fact, I call it har ki jeet. Okay. The ones I've worn, in, I've made a reel of all the ones that I've worn, different ones. Right. It's uh, on Insta also, you know, beautiful ones. Look at these bracelets. I'm not even exaggerating. And I'm not a jewelry person at all. Same here. Same here. You would see me with zero jewelry. Yeah. And when I'm coming to CKC, I'm always excited that I get to wear these beautiful jewelry. And uh, today I'm wearing a nice ring and these bracelets and this beautiful, beautiful uh, earring with a neck piece, which is a statement one. So, so what do you say? CKC is a friend forever. Yes. Like diamonds are of girls, women's best, best friends. friends. Yes. <laughs> so uh, yes, I think one of the most most beautiful showrooms of jewelry. Yeah. Uh, Very well appointed. Amazing. Very well. So yes. So when you get time, please do make a visit and you will not be disappointed. You will love their designs. So thank you CKC for being supportive. Coming back finally Thank you CKC for this. <laughs> well ma'am, so finally, what's your message and how did you feel being on Real Celebrity Podcast? I don't know about celebrities, Spurti. I never considered myself a celebrity. Um, I'm just an ordinary woman with some extraordinary experiences. That's all. Nothing. I'm sure there are many women out there with even more interesting stories to share with you. That's what every woman has a story. Correct. Say it, tell your story. Not to inspire, but just to feel good. Right. Every time you tell your story, you feel good. So did I make you feel good today? Amazingly good. Thank you. Thank you so much because every time I sit with you, I feel good. That's the first thing and it's fun. Yes. And it's so much of learning. So thanks so much. You can definitely connect with Chaya Ma'am on Instagram, on Facebook. You can keep in touch with Ma'am. And yes, thank you so much for coming here and being with us and sharing the words of wisdom and so much fun. Pleasure. Thanks a Total lot. Total pleasure. So finally, what's your message to everybody watching this? Have fun. You have only one life to live. Awesome. I love you, Ma'am. <laughs> Me too. Thank you Not so much. Not me too like that, but I also love you. Yes, me we all love you. <laughs> <laughs> me too sounds different. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that's Real Celebrity with Chaya Srivatsa. I'll see you soon with the next episode.